JD here, Tyrell Lewis, and you can see by this video, we're going to be discussing something which I hope will help out a lot of people because I know myself before I started racing, or if you want to call it sim racing, there were many questions I had with very little answers to, and that's about what equipment do you feel you need to start off with but this video is more about what equipment is within a reasonable budget aka under a thousand pounds which is obviously still a lot of money but there are some wheelbases and uh, pedals and cockpits out there that are over that just by itself I'm talking about getting a cockpit wheel and pedals for under a thousand pounds the best value for money that I feel you can get, which will take you to the highest level that you need, which for me would be F1 Esports, getting to that level you need to, to be signed by a team, or just becoming the fastest, the best driver that you possibly can be. So today we are going to be talking about what cockpits, what wheels and pedals I recommend. I say cockpit, because you do have things called wheel stands or you can play on the controller because I used to be a controller player myself for five to seven years I was a controller player for but in this video it's purely about people who want to play with a wheel and for me to get the best out of that you really do need to be using a cockpit because I feel that that is the roots of your equipment that is the foundation the platform of where you're going to get that experience where you are at your most comfortable and you can reach your full potential. Not to say that you can't without a cockpit, but for me, I feel it's definitely something worth investing in in order to tick all the boxes for everything. So that's what we are going to be discussing here today. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like, make sure you ask me anything you would like to do this video or wheels pedals cockpits anything you like i will do my best to answer it as well so starting off with the cockpit as i said that is really the foundation of your sim racing setup there are a lot of cockpits out there and i've had the pleasure to use a lot of them and that also goes for wheels and pedals going from just a very basic belt driven wheel to a direct drive same with the cockpits i used to play with a gamepad and now myself i actually have a sim sim lab p1x cockpit which is one of the most rigid stable cockpits you could get as a consumer but the ones i'm going to be talking about here i feel what i recommend in this video is just purely on how i feel ones i've actually used myself and with the price of everything altogether, I feel that this is probably some equipment you should consider using if you want to get the most out of it. For the, really the next five years, I think you could use this equipment for and compete at the highest level possible. So starting off with the cockpits, most people's popular choices are things such as the Placey Evolution Black or the Placey Revolution I'm going to be talking in pounds in this video. Should be converting some of them to euros as well. Um, but these products are really in between the 250 to 280 pound range, which is really, really good, um, you think. And it is very, very good. It's a very cheap option. They do offer good stability and it's definitely better than playing on a desk or playing on the wheel stand because you can mount your wheel and pedals to it. Most cockpits these days are fully compatible with all different brands. So that is definitely a big, big plus. However, with these ones, I feel because of the experience I've had with using different cockpits, there isn't much adjustment in these. There's no uh, formula position offered going from a GT style to a formula position. And I feel the design is a little bit flawed mainly with the centerpiece bracket which goes uh, between your legs mainly for pedal placement 
because uh, I had this issue when I used to use these cockpits and I used to use the play seat formula as well which we'll get onto in a minute when I was trying to place my pedals further to the left or right my leg was always uh, brushing up against uh, this design floor I feel in my opinion down the middle and that's why you see a lot of cockpits nowadays um, have completely eliminated that so for the price it is really good um, as I said it's definitely better than playing on a desk or anything else but I feel there's definitely even better cockpit values out there but with Placey itself I think the entry levels are are very good um, but then you go on to the Placey Sensation Pro which really racks up to £1,500 $2,000 it's definitely got a stronger flame uh, frame more rigidity there is that no centerpiece to block your feet plenty of mounting options so they have addressed that issue but obviously one of the cons is that it's very very expensive can't be put into a formal position and it doesn't actually have that much adjustment and as I just said before the play seat formula you know it gives you that formula position but then you don't have the GT position aesthetically it looks absolutely amazing but for the price it's very very expensive it doesn't have that much adjustability but the main issue I had with this cockpit and I actually owned this for a year and a half is really the rigidity it's really not a stable cockpit in my opinion especially when you start to use a direct drive or a wheel that has a strong force feedback or if you like to play with a strong force feedback the mounting just doesn't really feel secure the pedal tray really does flex when you use it and yeah i think the main price point is you sitting in a formula one style position which is great and it looks great but i think it's just very expensive for what it actually is and that leads us on to the Palacy Ultimate slash Intelligence, which is £2,000. And that one there is definitely a big step up in terms of how it feels. It's much more stable, really built for direct drive wheels, excellent amounts of adjustment for the wheel pedals and seat positioning. So everything that was wrong with the play seat formula, I feel they have definitely addressed. However, the issue is still the price. It's still limited to a formula position. You only, you're locked in with that seat that they use as well, so you can't interchange seats. And I believe there are stronger, more durable and rigid cockpits out there. Which then leads me on to cockpits such as the GT Omega series, which I also owned. I used to own a GT Omega ART cockpit. That starts off at £305, so a little bit more than the entry level play seat. Then it goes up to the GT Omega Titan cockpit, which then goes up to £409, so getting a little bit more expensive. And then now you have the GT Omega Prime cockpit, which a lot more manufacturers are going into the SimLab territory where they're using this aluminium profiling. I think it's 80 by 20, 80 by 40, whichever one it is, which offers a much more stronger base and rigidity. And for £679, uh, I think that includes the seat as well, is not too bad of a price. And it's definitely going to provide a very, very stable experience. However, in my opinion, I think there's even better value for money cockpits out there. And that is the GT1 Evo Sim Racing Cockpit by SimLab. Without the seat, it's £324.70. And you can include a seat, a reclining seat as well, for £281.87. Or you could get even cheaper seats. Or you could just even use a seat from your car or from another cockpit that you've had before. Where you might not even have to pay for it. You'll have to add the seat brackets, which are literally about £39. Which still makes it cheaper overall than the prime which in my opinion it's a higher quality finished product due to the experience of SimLab due to just the finishing of the laser cutting and just the precision it's it's gonna be really you can't get that much of a stronger consumer cockpit than this however my pick for an actual cockpit 
is none of these that I've mentioned. It is actually the Next Level Racing FGT. Because with the seat, with everything, it's £358, €417. Euros. And this just has so much adjustment. It can go from a Formula to a GT style position, hence the FGT name. It's very easy to set up. I found it to be very stable, very rigid. I actually use my direct drive wheel with a load cell pedal on this as well. And you know, it definitely has more flex than what a SimLab or the cockpit I have now. It definitely moves around a little bit more than that, but it's something you don't really notice too much in my opinion. And I think for the price point, 358 pounds for that, where you get everything included, no, with my P1X, with by the time I added my wheel mounts and the seat and everything, that was over a thousand pounds. And yeah, it's definitely more stable. But with the FGT, you can switch, but it just has so many more options potentially to it as well, where you can just change much quicker. The P1X, you can get in a formula position because you could just change the seat and everything as well. But with the FGT, it's just a much simpler cockpit, and I think for the price point. In my opinion, it does what all the others do above, but more. It looks great. It's very easy to adjust and set up. The only thing it's lacking is maybe the aluminium profiling that a SimLab would have, but I think for the value for money, this is better than, this is the best value cockpit for money, I would say, in my opinion. And I'd even say it's better than the GT Track, which is meant to be a better cockpit than this by Next Level Racing. I would actually go back to the FGT if I still had it when I did at the time but moving on from the cockpits this leads to the wheel and the pedals and this is where it already does depend on what platform you play on if you play on a console such as Xbox or PlayStation or if you're a PC gamer I'm gonna go through uh, some different options for each one and I feel it's pretty clear in my opinion but of course, again, it does depend on what your needs are. If you want a very immersive experience, then you might want to invest a bit more. But this is purely to try and get this budget within uh, under a thousand pounds for everything altogether. Um, so that's really the purpose of this video. So to start with, if you're playing on a PlayStation and PC, then I would go for the Logitech G G29 Driving Force Racing Wheel. I think it's got a very good force feedback. It's got a D-pad, which is very convenient for when you're playing Formula 1. The button layout is very good. It's got LED lighting, a rev lighting system. It's literally just a plug in and play wheel, which is not complex to set up. It's very easy to get the settings for, and it just does the job really, really well. The only bad thing about it is that it doesn't really have a premium feel. It's not really a Formula looking style or a Formula 1 looking style racing wheel. There are definitely stronger force feedback wheels out there. And one of the pros is obviously the price, £214. And that includes you a set of pedals as well, which is probably one of the cons. The pedals itself, there are definitely much better pedals out there. But I've used these pedals on the PS4 version and you really can get used to anything in time and you could be at esports pace with these pedals. I know plenty of esports drivers who use this wheel and pedals who are as fast as anyone. So it's all about what you're willing to get used to. I uh, don't think these pedals are by means all bad anyway. Um, but I think for if you're playing on PlayStation and you're on a budget, then look no further than this. If you're playing on Xbox, then the number one wheel I'd recommend is the Thrustmaster TMX Pro Force Feedback Racing Wheel. This could also be played on PC as well. This is £239 typically. It offers a great force feedback, a great value for money and design for all your needs. The button layout, like with the Logitech, it's got a D-pad on it, which makes it very convenient comes with pedals as well. These pedals are the T3PA three set plastic pedals, which I actually used for 
almost four years and they do the job very well yes they might not feel as premium as other pedals and they're not made out of metal or anything at all it does include a brake mod so if you do want a brake that's definitely stiffer and not going towards a load cell range but you know, closer to it then that is definitely something that can be useful the bad thing about this wheel is that you can't interchange the wheel rib itself the pedal resistance might be a bit too soft for you however you can upgrade to the TLCM which is the load cell pedals by Thrustmaster all the T3PO Pros which are fully metal and they're very very good and either one of those don't cost you a lot of money and with these combined it would still put you under a thousand pounds the other options as well are the Thrustmaster TMX this is 189 pounds however the reason why I don't really recommend this is it comes with a two pedal set which isn't very optimal and the pedals it comes with I feel are just really not good at all you can't change the distance you can't change anything on it it just doesn't feel great either and I believe in this one you can't interchange the rim however something you can do is buy the Frostmaster TX Servo Base this is £271 this gives you the ability to change wheels where you can go within the Thrustmaster ecosystem and as many wheels you can choose. However, it doesn't include the wheel itself or the pedals and in my opinion, doesn't offer as good force feedback as something like the Thrustmaster TMX Pro Force Feedback Racing Wheel. You can also go for the Thrustmaster TSXW. This is actually the base I had when I last used a Thrustmaster Good thing about this you can interchange with pretty much any wheel on the Thrustmaster ecosystem however the cost is the bad thing it, it usually is over 600 or even 700 pounds still to this day but it offers a great force feedback the cons are that it's expensive it only comes with a T3PA plastic pedals the free set which is still good and the other con is that it actually comes with the Sparco wheel which I don't feel is very useful for formula one and because it doesn't have a d-pad the button layout isn't that great and there isn't really enough buttons on it so you'll have to pay more for a better wheel and pedal set but if you want a wheel that will work on all platforms and includes the fgt cockpit and it comes under a thousand pounds then this might be the one for you and this might be the CSL Elite PS4 base, which actually works on all platforms, as long as you have a wheel that is compatible with all platforms. So the base itself is £342. If you get the McLaren and GT rim, that works on all platforms. You can use this wheelbase on any console and PC as well. Fanatec have actually released or are going to release a new pedal set which is actually 68 pounds it's called the CSL pedals and this is pretty much almost like a T3PA Frostmaster version and I believe this you can actually add a load cell kit to this as well 68 pounds for that is it looks absolutely amazing and then if you add the next level FGT that's 939 pounds and 71 pence for having a wheel a fanatic wheel with a cockpit that works on all platforms and i think that is insane so really it is down to what you really do like if you want a bit more of an immersive experience where you can you have that flexibility to go between different platforms and i think you definitely have to go for the fanatic Whereas if you do want to save a bit more money, um, then go for Logitech and you play on PS4 or PC only, then I think the Logitech is the option. Whereas if you just purely play on Xbox or you want to go on Xbox but you're thinking about PC, then maybe the Thrustmaster TMX Pro for Speedback Racing will, where you have 239 and you have the pedals included as well. Yeah, you're going to be saving money on those two options. But if you want to get really close to the 1000 mark and you've got a pretty premium product, then a CSL Elite PS4 base, a Claren GT rim, CSL pedals, and the next level FGT cockpit 
it's definitely going to get you there. So I think these are fantastic options. As I said, I think the FGT cockpit is the best value cockpit for what it is because it has the seat included. Now the GT Evo is definitely a very good shout. If you have a seat available, then that might even be a better option because it does offer more rigidity. It's harder to set up or it's harder to get the right uh, seat placement you want and it will take time to switch or make changes, but that's something that is very, a uh, lot more durable and pretty much future-proof as well. So, but I think the FGT does the job absolutely fantastic. And these wheels I mentioned feature the platforms, I think are very, very good options as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it is useful to people, especially with F1 2021 coming out next month. You could probably get these products even cheaper if you look on the Facebook marketplace or you look at deals online. These are just the ones I typically saw for the price of each one. So I hope you found it useful. Let me know if you've got anything you want to ask me down below in the comments and I will catch you very soon. Peace.